everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it is Triple, Triple Play. Play. And I'm here today with Natalie and Misty, and we've got a great project for you today, all based on pinwheels. Pinwheels. And we can't wait to show you how to do it. So I get to start first. All right. Let's get going. So this is my quilt. Take a look at it with me. Isn't it, Very darling? Very cute. Adorable. So it looks fairly straightforward, and it is, but the block has a little bit of a trick to it because this is how you make that block. So I'm calling my quilt Patchwork Pinwheels because it's lots of patchy squares, and I love that patchy look. And you're going to need one packet of two and a half inch strips, and I used um, Strawberry Lemonade by Sherry and Chelsea for Motive Fabrics. And you're also going to need some border fabric, and we have a nice big six inch border, one and a quarter yards for that. And the backing here is three and three quarter yards, and this is what it looks Ooh, that's like. That's cute, very cute. Really cute sweet floral. fabric. And we use curls of flowers on our quilting pattern. And the quilt ends up being 59 by 59. It's a kind of a good size lap quilt, great little picnic size for sure. Yeah. Anyway, let me show you how to do this. So I'm excited to show you how to make this because it's really simple. This is the block we're going for. And to make this, you're gonna need two half square triangles per block. You're gonna need one set of three and two sets of two strips sewn together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what color we want our pinwheels to be so they really pop. I chose red for mine, so I pulled all my red strips out. You need five strips. There were only four in my roll, so I went and cut a strip from the border. So five strips of these and five strips of background, and you're gonna sew them together like a tube. Where's for that tube, For your background, Missy? you just use the lights? I did, I just used the lights right out of the, out of the strip. So this is what it's gonna look like. You'll sew your whole strip like this, all five of them uh, together. It'll have the red on one side and the white on the other. And then you're gonna take your clearly perfect slotted trimmer and we're gonna go ahead and cut these into two and a half inch uh, half square triangles because that will make our pinwheel. So we're going to just line up our seam line with their seam line and we're just going to cut that. We'll cut off this little uh, outer edge down here. We're going to flip our strip over and cut again. Now not everybody flips their strip over uh, but I that's how my brain works so I like to do that. So we're just going to cut another like this, trim this side, trim this little edge off right here. And you'll need two of those for each block. So Misty, if you'll iron two. Of course. And you're gonna do that to all of your red and white strips. You're gonna sew them together in tubes and cut them into to two and a half inch half square triangles. All right, so now we need to make all the little two and a half inch squares. And we don't wanna cut those individually. We like to sew them in strip sets. So you're gonna need six strip sets where you sew three strips together. And you're gonna need six strip sets where you sew two strips together. And let me show you how we made the block. So out of each of these strip sets, you're just gonna go ahead and cut some two and a half inch segments like this. And so you wanna have all of your strip sets sewn so you can cut them all, make a pile of them because you want them to look really scrappy. You don't want all the same ones in the same block. So go ahead and finish those up and then we'll just show you how to put a block together. So once you get all of your pieces cut, put them in piles. We've got our groups of three, our groups of two, and our half square triangles, and we're ready to assemble the block. Now this is what our block looks like, and I highly recommend that you keep one of these blocks. Once you finish it, keep it close by because it's really important that these half square triangles go the same direction on every block. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a half square triangle to a group of two, and those are gonna look identical, just like this but then we're gonna flip them when we put them together. So let's, we're gonna put this apart, put our three strip in the middle, and we're just gonna flip this one, and that's gonna make our block right there. And so Natalie, if you wanna sew this together, that would be awesome. Okay. And we'll get that ready to go. Now, the really fun thing about this is that as I'm sewing these together, I realize that at every top, there's only a partial pinwheel. So I actually made a finishing block, like a border patchwork block that finishes the pinwheel. And we'll do that next. It's, it's much easier actually, because it's only one half square triangle in the corner. And then really you just sew these together in rows. You're doing great, Matt. 
And that one, remember, yep, the red color to the color, which is uh, my little mantra as I'm putting these together. That's so helpful to have. Little cues for your brain. Oh my gosh, I do it for <laughs> just about everything. I have a little mantra. And then I really do have a block yes. that I sit right here. And every time I put it together, I look at it. Sometimes when I lay them out, I even stack, you know, I'll stack these on oh, here. Oh, that's true. Like this, you know, going the right way. So I know that I have this one. You know, I just, I just make a stack yeah. and then I sew them from there so that they're all going the right way. All right, Misty, if you want to press that. Absolutely. I flipped a couple of those seams. That's all right. That's okay. You know what I say, if anybody looks inside to see which way your seam go, they are not your friend. That's right. Well, I just, I did it so they would nest better. All right. So now you can see we have two identical blocks, but when you turn them and put them together, see there's a half of your pinwheel oh, that comes cute. together. So on the quilt right here, for every block, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be here and then you're going to turn it this way, you know, and then you're going to turn it this way. You know, you're just going to go back and forth and turn that so they line up. But like I said, as you line these up, then you have this whole half a pinwheel. And I didn't love the look of the half a pinwheel. So I decided to make a border block right here so that we would actually finish our pinwheel out and it would patchwork all the way around the pinwheels. So this one is just really simple. It's two strips of the three like this, and then one strip of two like this, and one in the corner, just like that. And so it's just these two blocks. It goes together so cute. This one, you just, again, you rotate it as you turn it or put it around, but it gives it this whole scrappy finished outside. And I just think it looks so cute. I think it came together so well. So uh, whose turn is it next? I think me. Well, let's see what you got, Missy. All right. All right. All right, so this is my quilt and it is a big one. I am calling it Pinwheel Promise and I think you guys are really gonna like I love it. how it comes together. It's a fun little trick. Very cool. Thank you. So to make this quilt, you are going to need one package of 10 inch squares and I use the Brilliant Blue Batiks from Island Batiks. You're also going to need seven and a quarter yards of background fabric. And if you have the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmers, I use both A and B. And so those are handy to have as well. So let me show you how I did this. This is a great pattern for if you need a big quilt oh, fast. fast. It would come together really quick. And I yeah. forgot to show you the backing on this is really pretty. And we did free swirls. And so I think it's like That's nine, beautiful. It's beautiful. almost 10 yards, nine and three, nine quarter, and three yards quarter yards for this backing. So um, only almost three and a king quarter. Size, like it's yeah. very so, close to very king close. size. So what size is it? It's like. 90, 90 by 107. That's a nice it's big a quilt. It's a good size quilt. That's a nice big quilt. Yeah. All right, so let's dive into this. First up, we're gonna make our large half square triangles. And so we're gonna do that by pairing a 10 inch square of our print with our background square, if I can get a hold of these here. And we are gonna line those up and we're gonna sew all the way around, all four sides, and I have already done that here, so you can see. Perfect. Just like so, and we are gonna cut this in half, corner to corner, both directions. So let's go ahead and do that. And what size do these half square triangles end up? So we are gonna square them to six and a half. Perfect. There we go, and so then we need trimmer a for the half inch and so that's all the way down at the bottom of the ruler nice and big slide. great use of fabric yep very little waste so we'll just trim this little bit off yeah i love it when one side is straight enough you can slide the ruler yes, over it's so nice oops missed that little bit Dang it. that cut i got oh, you it. got it i Perfect. got it <laughs> all right and if you want to press that you're going to go ahead and square all of them okay but i have some other ones ready so we'll just start with that and then let's move on to our small half square okay. triangles all right that's ready to go we'll set it aside you guys Perfect. this is so so cool how she did this <laughs> great trick so this is the easy 16 is how we're going to do that so if there is a pencil would you mind hand handing me that and i'll show how i marked it right there, there. perfect and so we are going to draw a, a line 
down the middle, both directions. Just like so. And then for the 16, we are gonna sew all the way around the outside and then on both sides of both of the lines that we drew. Oh, very cool. And so Excellent. that is how this looks here. And so you can see exactly what I've done. All the way around. All the way around. And then on both sides of the lines. Of vertical and horizontal. Yes. Perfect. And so now we can cut these apart and I like to just cut back on those drawn lines. Mm -hmm. And now this basically is a mini version of the larger one that we made because now we have four or five inch squares that are sewed all the way around <laughs> and we can just cut these corner to corner both directions just like so. And then we are going to square these to three inches. Okay. And so that is our other trimmer. So you're using both in your pack. And that's just going to lay on there. Again, not a whole lot that we have to trim off. Perfect. And then we'll get these little notches because it'll make our life easier. There we go. All right. If you want to press that. All right. So now the real trick with this is you do need to make sure that you make all of them the same. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. And so I should have a finished block here. And I'm just going to make sure that I make this to match. That's right. <laughs> and so here is our large half square triangle. And I actually have a different color of our small here. And then we're going to use a sashing strip that measures three by six and a half. And we're going to set those in like so. So first we'll sew one to this block and then we'll sew our little half square triangle to the other. All right. This is such a cool technique. I was My... really excited. Jake actually helped me with this. And so it was pretty fun to see it come together. I love that. So we've got, these are three by six and a half. Yep. Exactly. And then this little one here. That's right. There we go. All right. And then we're going to sew these two yep, together so on the sides. Yep, so now you can just open that up and you'll sew them together. All right, so the big one is going one direction and the small one is going the other. Pointing opposite ways from I'm just each other. checking to make yep. sure so that I don't do it wrong. It's true, and you really do want to keep kind of the, the block there and just watch that you've got them right. Those pinwheels can get a mind of their own if they're going a different way. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. All right. All right. There's Perfect. One to press. If you will press that, Nat. Oh, I'd love to. Okay. So then now these are the blocks that I made and I just started setting them together into big pinwheels. And so you can see when you start to put them together, you get this large pinwheel in the middle. I love it. And then so we'll sew that those together cool. like a so four it kind patch. of looks like it's bordered. But it, then... it does. And so kind of like yours, Jenny, I had these little half pinwheels oh, yeah. on the outside. And I was like, well, I can't end with just a half a pinwheel. So I did mm -hmm. finish it off by making these sashing blocks. So this is a 12 and a half inch sashing strip mm -hmm. that you'll need. And then mm -hmm. I had those little guys. Here we go. And so then you just need to make sure that the pinwheels continue. And so this goes just around like just, the outside edge. This becomes edge. your outer border that goes all the way around all of because your blocks. Because as you put Very this cool. block next to another block, right. it automatically, it automatically does these uh -huh. in the middle. But oh, then we just have these so halves cool. on the end. So this is just what makes your outer border. That's super creative. That's great. I love it. Thank I love it so you. I think much. it turned out so good. So it is one, two, three, four, five big blocks across by one, two, three, four, five, six down. So and then that's 30 big blocks. 30 big, big blocks and then that last border on the outside and that is it. it. That's very I cool. Love it. Awesome. I love it. All right, Natalie, you're All up. All right, my turn. All right, so my quilt is called Drunkard's Path Pinwheels. I love and it. And we've Perfect. said we've said many times in the past a Drunkard's Path is the a same as a half square triangle. Yeah. It's half square 
half square triangle on a curve. That's right. That's right. So I made pinwheels using my drunkard's path template and I think it turned out really great. It's super cute. It's 56 inches square and I used simple roses for the machine quilting pattern. I think that can, it's very soft and yeah. subtle. It's pretty, sweet. pretty fabric. I used um, Prisma Dyes Cotton Candy by Robert Kaufman. You'll need two packages of print squares. For your background, you'll need a yard and a half, and that includes your sashing, your inner, this little one and a half inch in between the blocks. You will need some border fabric, and I've used this border fabric in two places, and that is going to be um, a yard and a quarter. Okay. okay. And I actually used that fabric for my binding and my backing as well, and I think it turned out really great. I love Isn't it. Isn't that pretty? I think it's beautiful. It's really pretty. Just kind of a... It's so soft. Multicolored, but also very subtle and beautiful. All right. So for your backing, you'll need three and three quarters. It's a smaller quilt, 56 square, and I think it turned out great. It's really cute. You will also need your Drunkard's Path template, which is so easy to use, as you will see. Yep. All right, so we're just gonna make a few sets of Drunkard's Path blocks to make our pinwheel. We'll start out with um, some dark, the darker squares show up best, mm -hmm. but we did use all of them and you can see how they blend in. Um, let's see, we'll select four. Let's do a yellow, a couple purples. And these batiks are great to stack. They're very thin and they stay together pretty well. So I usually cut as many as I can at a time. Kind of a live on the edge type deal. There you go, <laughs> living on the edge. All right, so we'll start by cutting our inner curve first. And what we'll do is we're gonna use these pieces in the border and then these pieces for the middle blocks. So we, we do use them all, we'll get there. All right, so we are cutting the same pieces from both our print and our white squares. So we're gonna cut these and set them aside. We're gonna do one block at a time here, and I'm gonna flip these around and get the little outside edges cut. We line this up with the four and a half, and you can see that that curve is just slightly different and these hang off. So we wanna do all this cutting before we start to sew. Now, could you just use five inch squares for that? You could, you, yes, but because we, had, because we had the little sashing strips okay, out of the same, that sink, makes sense. sorry out of the same fabric. <laughs> that makes sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also cut my print outside edges. It's always interesting to me that when you cut these, they're not exact. You don't I use know. the same two It does. Pieces. It just makes it easier to piece together. It I really think does. if you wanted to, you could sew them together, but you, then you'd end up squaring later. So yeah. it's kind of, the template is designed to work this way and it, it does really come together beautifully, so. All right, let me just get rid of that. So what we're gonna do first is stitch together our Drunkard's Path with okay. the white on the outside and the print in the middle. You'll want to find your middles on both of these and They're line them up. They're relatively easy to sew together, which surprises me every time yeah. I do it. Yeah, so you just fold this in half and finger press your center. And then that goes like that. All right. When I started right sewing these, I actually start? started you can from pin that middle if you out. want to, but it's usually it's easier for me not to have pins because they kind of get in the way. Yeah. Okay. So I find the same thing. I just didn't know if you had a preference. Yeah, and I think everybody's different. I've also seen people put a dab of glue at the ends mm -hmm. and in the middle, yeah. and that that can work really well too. Yeah, I actually, when I first started doing this, I was so afraid mm -hmm. of those ends that I started in the middle and worked my way out and then started in the and middle and worked my way out. that is a really great way to do it too, Until I think. I, yeah, and it, when you, then when you get to a point, you can just really sew it on you know, right. when you've done them enough. You kind of just have to do what works best and be patient. It is pretty forgiving though, because really you have that, that bias, it just, it works itself out. My favorite part of these is pressing them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause they just lay down so nice, especially mm -hmm. with the batik, but it's just, it just lays down so nice. Very cool. So just like Misty's doing, take your time. Yep. All right. There okay. We go. So let's press this back. It's so fun to see this too. It's just like, 
I know you just think there's no way this will lay flat. That's yeah, right. and then it works. <laughs> and then so it you're gonna dies. make you're gonna make little drunkard's path blocks, several with the print in the middle and several with the white in the middle and the print on the outside. You have some more here. So we'll do all of that. I've got some put together. So to make our pinwheel now, are those, block, yours are ironed in. I'm gonna try ironing in. Then. Oh, Sorry. interesting. Well, you can do this whichever way is comfortable for you. It makes no difference at all. Oh, look at that. Comes together really nicely. It's so satisfying. It? Yes, I love <laughs> it. All right. Will you pull out my uh, sure. my finished block? Because I want to make sure that all of my pinwheels are going the same direction. <laughs> yes. So important. Really, I mean, you can do it either way, but you just want to make sure that they are all consistent, consistent in your quilt. Right. So we are going to turn these up. And then this one goes like this. One of the things I love about the pinwheel or the right drunkard's one. path block in particular is that this little section gets caught in the seam so mm -hmm. then it looks like they're really connected and you don't have to and worry about that here. point. It just looks great. So if you'll sew this together here and then this one together. These should all end up being four and a half. So you can check them against your square ruler if you want to, but if you've lined this up with the corner, they should be four and a half square. Do you check them? Um, I do sometimes, yeah. Because sometimes when you're pressing or stitching, because you have bias, it could stretch a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, it's always a good idea to just kind of see where you're at and if you want to trim them down. This is so fun with the drunkard's path. You know, most people wouldn't put a pinwheel and drunkard's path in the same mm -hmm. sentence. Now we open that, make sure we got it right. Yep, looks good. Fold it over. Okay. Yep. And nest that. those seams in the middle. There's that. All right. If you'll press that. Oh, I'd be delighted. So these are what makes up the middle of your quilt. So we're putting all these little pinwheel blocks and it's four by four. And then the sashing is an inch and a half. All right. So then, then we have our borders. We have an inner border, which is three inches. Then we have our middle border of these really cute little um, clamshells. It's like a scalloped edge, which yes. I think comes together I really love that. cute. Yeah, that too. It's really cute. So that is what you make with your with your inside background and your print on the other side. Right. And you're just showing yeah. that. So you're um, just, you're just stitching them together. together just like this and it makes a little that little clamshell adorable. look. And then your outer border is four and a half inches. So you've got three, four and a half and four and a half. Perfect. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It that's comes together adorable. so cute. Don't forget, you'll need a solid block in your corners. That's a four and a half inch square. Okay. And that can be cut down from some of your charm squares. And Perfect. did you cut your um, your little uh, corner blocks out of the border? Um, yes, that is border fabric. So that's your your little corner stones. Which are one and a half. Mm -hmm. One and a half. One and a half cool. inch squares. I love yeah. that. Really So cute. that's it. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is super simple. It's a great way to practice your curved piecing. Nice quilt that comes together really quick. I and love it, it. Yeah, super good. It's a great idea with the Drunkard's Path. I think that's really fun. Well, thank you. I, I hope everybody enjoys it. So we hope you enjoyed this triple play on the pinwheel block from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.